In the last few videos we have learned how to use the equilibrium constant in combination with ice diagrams to learn how to calculate concentrations of various species at equilibrium. Uh, now, uh, what we have seen in those three videos is uh, how generally you have to solve a quadratic equation for many chemical reactions. Sometimes uh, you can use an approximation, sometimes you, can't use, you cannot use an approximation, you have to solve the quadratic equation, and so forth. Uh, in this video, we're going to see uh, a way to solve the quadratic formula, uh, which is uh, through the method of iteration. Right, so uh, let's set up the example with this equilibrium of acetic acid, deprotonating uh, to protons, and then acetate. And we're going to start the reaction with uh, 1.0010 to the minus 4 more concentration of uh, acetic acid, and then no products. So we're going to build the ice diagram and then find out uh, how to solve for those concentrations of equilibrium. Remember that the equilibrium constant for this process is simply the concentration of protons times the concentration of acetate over the concentration of acetic acid at equilibrium. And when you have these values at equilibrium, then that value is equal uh, to 1.8 10 to the minus 5. That is the equilibrium constant. All right, so let's build the, the ice diagram with this uh, data. Here we're going to write the molar concentration of acetic acid in units of molar. Here's the concentration of protons in units of molar. And that is the concentration of acetate in units of molar. All right, so we start with the concentration of 1.00, 10 to the minus 4, and then no protons, no acetate. The change is going to be uh, some unknown amount, which we will be able to uh, figure out from the problem. And then uh, the concentration of protons will uh, grow by the same amount, right? because the stoichiometric the coefficients are 1 and 1. And then uh, the amount of acetate will grow by exactly the same amount. What we then have is that at equilibrium, we will have uh, for acetic acid the initial value minus whatever has reacted. And then for protons, we will have uh, the amount that has reacted and the same thing will happen for acetate. Right, so then we're ready to uh, plug these values at equilibrium in the equilibrium constant and see if we can solve this. All right, so that will be uh, concentration of protons, which is x, concentration of acetate, which is x, so that is going to make it an x squared. And then in the denominator we have uh, the concentration of acetic acid, which is 1.00 10 to the minus 4 minus x, and this has to be equal to 1.0 10 to the minus 5. All right, so we have to solve uh, this expression for x. And the first thing that we would do is, because we have a small equilibrium constant, we're going to be very tempted to say, well, uh, that x is going to be quite small. And that perhaps means that we can neglect it uh, compared to this value of the, con the initial concentration of uh, acetic acid. However, notice that this initial concentration of acetic acid is also very small. So the approximation might not work well. We're still going to do it and see, uh, then test if the approximation is good enough. Right, so neglecting uh, this minus x and then solving that equation, we find an x uh, which, which has a value of 4.2, 10 to the minus 5. And now is when we examine if we can uh, apply that approximation or not. The uh, criterion that we're using is to uh, assume that if this value is 5% or smaller, the value uh, of the number that is bigger, then the approximation is valid. Okay, so let's actually see if that is the case. That is that we, if we divide uh, the value of x that we have obtained by the value that we're using uh, to neglect that x, okay, this number happens to be equal to 0 0.42, which is much, much greater than the 0 0.05, which would be the 5% threshold, right? And this has to be smaller than 0 0.05. This is our criterion, and it clearly is not. So in this case, the approximation is not valid, and then we're, uh, we're uh, forced to use the quadratic exp expression. However, uh, if you want to avoid use the, of the quadratic expression, uh, what we're going to see now is how to use a, a slightly different method which again does not involve uh, the use of the quadratic formula and instead uses the method of iteration. Okay, so this is how it works. We already have a, a guess for the value of x. We know that this x is not going to be the exact number 
because that approximation is very dramatic, but it's a good initial guess uh, uh, towards the convergence of that unknown. Okay, so what we're actually going to do is take this x that we have right here, we're going to plug it in the denominator, and then solve the equation for x with that guessed value of uh, that unknown. If uh, the solution that we get uh, from this uh, procedure is the same, then we will have to convert. If not, then we actually can continue to do this. Okay, so the way that this works is we're going to build a table uh, in which we have here uh, the input uh, of x in the denominator, and then we'll uh, see what the output is once we solve for x after plugging this value into the uh, denominator. Right, so again, the first step would be uh, take this value, which is a guess, right, plug it in here, and then solve for x. When we do that, we find an uh, uh, output value equal to 3.2 uh, 10 to the minus 5. Okay, so clearly, uh, what you get after I plug this value into the denominator okay, is not the same. Okay, but now I can use this new value of x that I have obtained and then iterate it again, right? So I will now plug this into the denom denominator, solve for x, and see if I'm getting closer to convergence, right? So the next step, the second iteration, so this will be the number of iterations, that is the first, the second, I would take the output of the prior iteration, 3.2 10 to the minus 5, okay, plug it into the denominator, and then solve for x, and see if I'm getting closer. Okay, when I do that, I find here a value of 3.5, 10 to the minus 5. And notice now that uh, these numbers are not the same, but are becoming closer. That means that I, I am converging to the actual solution. So I can continue to reiterate this until those two numbers are the same. Now I take the uh, output value from the second iteration, plug it into the denominator, solve for x in the numerator, and see if I'm getting any closer. Right, so after I do this, uh, that will be my input, 3.5, 10 to the minus 5. The output is 3.4, 10 to the minus 5, and clearly I'm getting very close. I still have to do one more iteration to make sure that this number that I'm getting right here is, is the, the actual solution, right? So I will do one more iteration, take the output of iteration 3, plug it into the denominator, solve for x, and see what that value is, right? So when I plug 3.4, 10 to the minus 5, in the denominator, I get that the solution is also 3.4, 10 to the minus 5. So clearly, I have converged to the uh, actual solution. And if you were to use the quadratic formula to solve for this, that is the exact uh, number. Okay, so this uh, shows how the iteration method uh, can be used if you, if you want to avoid use of the quadratic formula. Okay, so with this we can uh, try to finish the problem. Now we know that x, that x is equal to 3.4, 10 to the minus 5. We can come back to this uh, equilibrium row in the ice diagram and then find that the concentration of that equilibrium will be 6.6, .6, 10 to the minus 5 molar, and then 3.4, 10 to the minus 5 molar, and then 3.4, 10 to the minus 5 molar. You can do the final check of plugging these values at equilibrium into the equilibrium expression, and then you will see that you recover the value of the equilibrium constant, which means that our, our iteration method is satisfactory. Uh, we, ha we have obtained the right values. Okay, so in this video, we have introduced the concept of uh, solving via iteration a quadratic expression. This is useful if you want to avoid use of the quadratic formula and can be used to calculate concentrations at equilibrium.